Kamnian explains the rules of Canadian football. The object of the game is for your team to score more points than the opposing team. Teams are made up of 44 players, with 12 players taking the field at any one time. The field is 110 yards long by 65 yards wide, with two 20 yard end zones at each end. White markings on the field help players, referees and spectators keep a track of what's going on. The game starts with a kickoff. The team with possession of the ball is known as the offense, and the team without the ball is the defense. The job of the offense is to move the ball up the field and score points. This can be done by either running forwards with the ball, or by throwing it up the field for a teammate to catch. The offense is given three chances, or three downs, to make at least 10 yards. If the offense manages to move the ball 10 yards or more, they will retain possession of the ball, whilst given another three downs to make another 10 yards. On your TV screen you will see this graphic. This tells you what down the team is on, and this tells you how many yards they need to make. If you're also watching this on TV, they will also show you the lines that they need to cross in order to make their downs. The defense's job is to stop the offense moving the ball by tackling. This includes pulling them to the ground, stopping them from moving forward, or forcing them off the field. If the offense fails to move the ball 10 yards within 3 downs, the ball is given to the defending team at that point. The defending team will then bring on their offensive players and try and move the ball in the opposite direction so that they can score. You will most likely see the offense kick the ball away on 3rd down to make it more difficult for the other team to score. The teams will usually have 3 different units of 12 players that come on the field at different times. They include The offense These players will usually come on the field when they have possession of the ball. The offensive unit consists of these positions. The quarterback is the most important player on the field, and he's the one who decides to pass the ball up the field, hand it off to a teammate so that they can run with it, or decide to run with it himself. The offensive line positions are usually responsible for protecting the quarterback. The wide receivers and slot backs are responsible for running down the field to catch the ball thrown by the quarterback. The running back and full back are responsible for running with the ball up the field. The defense. These players will usually come on the field when the other team has the ball. The defensive unit consists of these positions. The defensive line is responsible for moving past the offensive line. The linebackers stop running backs coming through the middle. And they're also responsible for attacking the quarterback. The cornerbacks try and stop the wide receivers. And the safeties try and stop the pass up the middle of the field. Special teams. Special teams are specialist players that come on the field when there's a kick involved. Within the special teams is a mixture of offensive and defensive players mixed with either a punter or kicker for offense or a punt returner for defense. Now you know what all the players do and how the game is played, but how do you score? In Canadian football, there's five different ways of scoring. Number one, touchdown. The main way of scoring is via a touchdown. If the ball is carried into the end zone area or thrown and caught in the end zone, this is a touchdown and is worth six points. Unlike in rugby, you don't need to touch the ball down onto the ground. All you have to do is cross the line with the nose of the ball to score. Number two, extra points. Once a touchdown has been scored, you have the option of kicking it through the uprights for an extra point, or trying to pass the ball into the end zone again for an extra two points. Most teams play it safe and go with the one point. Number three, a field goal. At any time, the team with the ball can kick the ball between the posts and over the crossbar. To do this, they must hand it to a teammate who will hold it onto the ground ready for the kicker to make the kick. A successful kick scores 3 points. Number 4. Safety. If the defense tackles an offensive player behind his own goal line, the defending team scores 2 points. Number 5. Rouge. Unique to Canadian football, a rouge, more commonly known as a single, scores 1 point for the following 3 scenarios. If the kicking team misses a field goal and it goes out of bounds, if the kicking team punts the ball out of bounds through the end zone, or if a defensive player is tackled in his own end zone after a kick. Each of these scores one point. The game is played in four 15 minute quarters for a combined playing time of 60 minutes. High score at the end of 60 minutes wins. There are no ties in Canadian football, so overtime periods are played if necessary to determine the winner. Is that it? Is that all I need to know? Well, you're almost there, but Canadian football is filled with lots of rules, and you'll need to understand a few more of them before you watch or play a game. For example, fumble. If a ball carrier or passer drops the ball, that's a fumble. Any player on the field can recover the ball by diving onto it or running with it. The team that recovers the fumble gets possession of the ball. Interception. An aggressive defense can regain possession of the ball by catching or intercepting passes that are meant for players on the other team. 
both fumble recoveries and interceptions can be run back into the end zone for touchdowns. Incomplete pass. If a pass intended to receiver hits the ground first, it is ruled an incomplete pass. A down is wasted and play restarts from the spot of the last down. Penalty. If a player breaks one of the rules, referees will throw flags onto the field. They will then determine who made the foul and how many yards his team should be penalized. Timeouts. If a team wants to stop the clock to regroup, take a break or discuss strategy, they are allowed one timeout per half. Each timeout lasts 60 seconds and players get a break of 14 minutes at half time. This is a lot to take in, but once you start playing or watching Canadian football, the rules will become clear. If you have found this video at all helpful, please like, share with your friends, rate and comment. It takes me ages to make one of these videos and good karma is always appreciated. Enjoy Canadian football.